Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Kingswood Royal Edition is one of those games that I got kind of on a lark on Kickstarter. Kind of looked neat, didn't give it a lot of thought. Thought, hey, maybe something that I would like. It looked interesting, so I got it, took a chance on it and received it, and I almost forgot about it, to be honest, but when it came in, I thought it was going to be a heavier game than this. It's a kind of a light game, something you definitely play with your kids or a family weight game, but you can play with gamers, too, if you want to. There's some there's some things going on here, definitely, but just kind of know it's kind of a light, light game aspect. So you, there's nobody that you control, which is kind of neat. You have these uh, meeples on the board, and you can move any of them, and you just kind of pay if you want to move them. If they're on a spot, they're blocking it. That's the key, right? So you want to get your attributes kind of built up and then go to the forest and fight monsters. And that's kind of how you're going to score victory points by by using those attributes. So it's kind of interesting you don't give them up. You just flip them over and you have to go around the board and refresh them. That usually costs you currency to do that. So you need to get those coins out. The game does come with quite a few tiles. At least the Royal Edition does. So you can mix it up. You're not always playing the same locations, which is direly needed. You got the Royal Court guy that can come out and then you get cash if you take him off. That works fairly well. There's a lot of variety in the monsters. The artwork is cute. It's played for cuteness and not scariness. So the monsters in the force aren't going to scare little kids very much. And I think the game works pretty well overall. I probably guess a 6 or a 7 on the BGG scale. And I think it works. It just isn't something that's going to blow your mind or have these deep strategic decisions. Although there are strategic decisions in the game. And it works really well. I probably think for my gaming, this game is going to work more for the family. I think it's going to be a really neat game. I think it's going to make my kids think about their moves in advance and what they want to do and how they want to block others, but also taking the move that they want to do. But a lot of it's just getting your attributes, getting back to that force, and scoring those victory points. But it's a good stepping stone game for the kids. I think I like it more as a family game than I do a gamer game. I think that's the intended audience for this one. Absolute keeper for us. We've had a great time with it and plan on having more good times. Here's Kingswood. This is the Royal Edition. I got this off a of Kickstarter. It's pretty striking. You can see the bad guys here, and this person is walking through the forest, almost like Little Red Riding Hood. You're going to get a rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. And then you're going to get the boards. This will be the little scoreboard, the King's Tally that you'll have. It's nice cardboard. Nothing wrong with that. And then you're going to get some chips. Now, these are really nice. I think these are deluxe upgraded ones. Uh, but these are like uh, very thick, as you can see, and they're double-sided here with the books. Very nice. And all of these are made out of the same material that you're going to be collecting. So it just it's not exactly cardboard. Maybe it's like deep wood, but it's silk screen there. So all of these materials will be made in that same thing. Uh, I think this regular cardboard is what's going to come with the game. Uh, I kind of set mine aside here and kept it, but this is just regular cardboard. So if you don't have the Royal Edition... You're going to get this little, and it's pretty thin, to be honest, but this is what you would get with it uh, versus the upgrades in the royal condition, right? Uh, this is what mine came with. You have these uh, people, these blues that have been moving around the board. Uh, these have, uh, I don't know if they're silk screened or if they're stickers. I didn't sticker myself. They look really nice, and I think they're silk screened. Then you're going to have this guy that will be out, too. These are really cool. I like these quite a bit. Mine came with these metal coins. These are heavy metal coins, right? You can see them. They have the uh, the king's wood symbol on them, and on the other side they have uh, a tree. If you can see that in there, very nice metal point. They're very heavy, so these are very very nice. If you ask me, you're also going to get a crown that will be used, and then you're going to have a bunch of cards. Oh, look at this coin in here. So you have the king's wood coin. This is a big one. I think it's the first player tracker. And then you're going to have these uh, cards here that will have different artwork on them. You can kind of see what you're doing here. These are the bad guys that you'll fight. You can see they're not very scary. They won't scare kids off because this is a very easy game that kids could play. Then you have your chapter cards that will be in here. A little bit creepy with that hand coming around there And number two. And you can see it gets a little bit closer in round three. Um, very nice. And these are the scarier ghosts that will come out. But, you know, like a dragon. They're nothing too scary. And a troll, you can see he's drooling there. So, play for laughs. And this will be the board that you're playing on. So, these are nice cardboard that you'll be moving people around. And you have plenty of variety in the game, as you can see here. So, you have a little bit of an insert. It's not exactly custom, but as you can tell, it works fine for this game. So, here's the rule book for Kingswood. You can see that when you open it up, you have a picture of all the components and setup that you'll have here over to the side. So, it works fairly well. You have your goal, your resources, how to take a turn, and kind of breaks everything down in detail. It's a very simple game. It may not look like it from this rulebook, but it is very, very simple. How to capture master or monster, the game in, and then there's solo play that's included in this game. 
and then just a picture on the back. The rule book probably take you 10, 15 minutes to get through. The game is super simple as soon as you get it up. Uh, it, it was deceivingly simple how to play this. So this is what the game is going to look like set up. You're going to have these boards that will be around. Uh, there are plenty of extras that you can mix things up if you want. This is the recommended setup for the first time playing. You also have these three guys around the board on these locations, and you have the red guy off to the side. You're going to have your scoring here in the middle, and you're going to have three uh, random chapter one bad guys over here, and this will kind of get you started. Each player will choose a guild, which will give you a different power during the game and a different unique uh, setup. So you can see here, this guy gets three coins, three coins, sword and sword, but a book versus a heart. This one gets three coins and uh, two swords to start out with. That's your starting loot. Everybody has a different power. So it's important to note that you're going to be moving these blue guys around the board. You do not own any of these. Everybody will be using these guys. So I can move that guy, that guy, or this guy. does not matter. I'll get back to the red guy in a moment. So what you can do is you can move one of these guys to an adjacent location. It doesn't matter which way you go, and it doesn't matter which of the three guys you move. I could move this guy, or I could have very easily moved this guy. Once you're at a location... Uh, that's fine. You can move uh, to an adjacent one and that's great. Or you can pay a coin to keep moving. So if I wanted to move this guy to get here, uh, this one would be free and that would pay a coin to move there. Now that would be silly to do that because I could have just moved this guy for free, right? But maybe for some reason I want to keep that guy there so nobody else can go there because you cannot go to a location where a blue guy is already at. And you must move at least one guy. So maybe I want to block those guys off and it's worth a coin to move that guy there perhaps. Or I could have moved adjacently for free. And I could keep moving. So you can keep moving and paying a coin if you so chose. Now wherever you stop, you'll be able to take the ability at that location. So let me show you some of these. This is very easy. It gives you three coins. You gain three coins. This one, you can pay a coin and you can refresh all of your books. So when you, when you have these books... They'll be on the colored side, and when you use them, they go to the gray side. So you don't ever use them and give them up. You just have them used. You need to refresh them. This way, I could play a coin and refresh all of my books, or the same, you know, or I could gain a book. So let's say all mine are refreshed, and I don't want to refresh them. I can pay a coin and just gain another one, and this book would be in my personal reserve. And you're going to see a lot of those are going to be like that, especially with these. So same thing I just explained, but with the sword tokens. Same thing I just explained, but with the heart token. This one allows you to refresh one of your swords and capture a monster from the forest. That's King's Castle. It's pretty cool. And then the forest is where you're going to fight any number of revealed monsters. So if you want, when you're ready to go down here and fight these guys, you can do so. Uh, and this is kind of how it goes. So I would need at least three hearts, uh, which will be from this bag. So I have three hearts. The last one's broken. So that one I do have to give up. Otherwise, I would just turn these over. So let me illustrate that for you. I have uh, three hearts. I would have to uh, use two of them. And then the third one, I would actually lose and come off the board, and I would no longer have it. That's kind of how that would work. Then I would gain this, and the fireball allows me to refresh all my used swords, and I would get three victory points at the end of the game. So that's kind of how that works. And every time you score points, you're going to move up on the track. When somebody gets to 20 points, the game will end, and you'll be ready to move on to the final scoring of the game. So in essence, the game is very easy. You're going to have these guys on these spots here, and you'll be able to move them around. Now, occasionally this red guy uh, will be on a spot. Instead of moving and doing the actions, I can do what's called the collect action. I simply take him off the location, put him off to the side, and I would gain two coins. If at any point the King's Guard is not on a location, at the end of your turn, you would simply put him somewhere, and he would be on that location. He will block that location but somebody can take him off for two coins. Who should buy this game? So this is one of those things where like, if your family plays like Parcheesi, this game may be what you would call a heavier game. Uh, if you're used to playing, you know, Ticket to Ride and things like that, this will fit right in that scale for you. And if you're used to playing, you know, the latest Kanban or the latest uh, Vitale game, then, you know, this is going to be super light for you. So it kind of depends on where on the scale you're at, but I think this game will squarely fit with most families and light gamers. I think the decisions, how to play the game and learn the game is very easy. And then from there, the strategies kind of come out on what you want to do and the timing of it, what you want to block and all that kind of stuff comes out of it. But I think this for us, and that's really what I need to review it on, is squarely in the family atmosphere. I think it excels in that area. Uh, and the heavier gaming stuff, I don't know if it really excels for that, but I think for what its intended purpose is, you're going to have a great time. So if you've got a family, 8, 10, 12-year-olds, I think this is a very good game for you to squarely play with them and have a great family night.